Hello, good morning, students. So I welcome you all to this new class. And as we are studying about the climate, we studied in the previous class about the winter season in India. We experience. We explain how people experience winter. Some places it is very severe winter. Some places it is you no know, very mild winter. And some places people don't experience winter at all. So that is because of the topography of of India, and also due to the high pressure and the low pressure and the blowing on the winds and so on. So today let us study about another second season in India. That is the hot weather season. So after the winter season, we said winter season will go up to. Uh, february from now on to february the winter is experienced in india for um, these four months so after that from march onwards we begin this hot weather season so let us see about it we can take your textbook page number 31 so due to the apparent uh, northward movement of the sun so the sun is remaining same always but we feel morning sun is in one place, afternoon sun is in another place or during winter sun is in one place, in the summer it is in another place. So we, it appears to be moving, the sun appears to be moving. So because of that, the global heat belt shifts northward. So because of this apparent movement of the sun, we experience the shifting of the heat belt. The heat that was experienced in the certain region that is shifting towards northward, towards the north of India. And as such, from March to May, that means three months, March, April, May. So March to May, it is hot weather season in India. So which are the months India experiencing hot weather season? March, April and May. So the influence of shifting of the heat belts, so we said because of the apparent movement of the sun, the heat belt is shifting towards north. So towards north it is going the heat belt, the heat area, the hot area is moving towards the north. So it can be seen clearly from temperature recordings taken during the March, May at different latitudes. So, if you take temperature at different latitudes, different parts of India, we will be able to see as we move towards the north, the temperature is increasing. So, the highest temperature in March, the highest temperature is about 38 degrees Celsius. So, if you take the temperature in the month of March, the highest is 38 degrees Celsius. And that is recorded in the Deccan Plateau. So it is in the Deccan Plateau that is uh, experienced. The highest temperature is experienced, and it is up to 38 degree Celsius. <coughs> then uh, after one month, in April, if you go and see the temperature, we will find temperature in Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh are around 42 degree Celsius. So in the month of March, the highest temperature is in the Deccan Plateau that is up to 38 degrees Celsius. And if you go after one month, we see the heat belt is shifted. From Deccan Plateau it is uh, shifted to shifted to where? To Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh. So it is moving towards north. And there it is how much it is? It comes up to 45 degrees Celsius. So again, if you wait one more month and go and see the temperature in, let's say in May, the temperature is 45 degrees Celsius in the northwestern parts of the country. So in the month of March, it is 30, uh, 38. Then the month of April, it becomes 42 
and in the month of May it becomes 45 towards the north and the western part of our country. So as we move towards north, uh, year by month by month the temperature is increasing. In peninsular India, temperatures remain lower due to the moderating influence of the ocean. So if you go to the peninsular region, that is the southern part of India, we know it is uh, surrounded by the ocean from both sides. It is surrounded by the ocean. And because of this presence of ocean, the temperature does not rise very high. The temperature remains moderate, not too cold and not too hot. That is because of presence of the ocean from both sides. Then the summer months experience rising temperature and falling air pressure in the northern part of the country. So when this summer comes, what happens in the northern part of India? We experience the temperature is rising, the temperature is increasing. Then the air pressure is falling. So the air pressure was very high before and that is falling, it is becoming less. And towards the end of May, that is towards the end of this uh, hot season, an elongated low pressure area developed in the region extending from Thar Desert in the northwest to Patna and Chota Nagpur Plateau in the east and the southwest. So towards the end of May, what happens? An elongated low pressure area. Elongated means a long, long air, long, low pressure area is created. That means in a large area, the there comes low pressure. So we said the temperature, the air pressure is falling. The temperature is rising, but the air pressure is rising. So this low air pressure area, which is a very large area, covering a large area, it is. Uh, moving from Thar Desert, from Thar Desert it is starting and going up to Padna and Chota Nagpur. So it is such a vast area. From Thar Desert to up to Chota Nagpur, this low pressure area is existing, developing. Then circulation of air begins to set in around this trough. So the Air pressure is low, therefore from other places, the temperature in the other places, air comes and moves into this area. So, yes, air movement starts in this region where this low pressure is created. So, when there is low pressure, air will come from another place where there is high pressure. So, high pressure area to low pressure area. So, there is a, a wind is formed. Then, a striking feature of the hot weather season is the dew. So during this hot weather season, there is something called dew. Let us see what it is. So these are strong, gusty, hot, dry winds. So they are wind. Low dew means wind. What kind of wind it is? They are very strong wind. So because of this low pressure, the winds are formed and they are very strong, they are very gusty. Gusty means very uh, little we can say and they are also very hot. Since they are blowing through this hot region, it is a hot wind because it is not formed in the sea, it is formed over the land and blowing over the land. Therefore, it is a hot and dry wind. And it is blowing over during the day over the north and the northwestern India. So another speciality of this wind loop, it is blowing during the day, not during the day and night, but only during the day. And that is also over north and the northwestern part of India. So where this draft is formed, this wind is blowing there. And sometimes they even continue until late in the evening. So sometimes this wind will continue blowing till late evening. So 
we said this wind is blowing only during the day and sometimes it starts in the morning and it continues till evening that means whole day morning till evening the wind is blowing there then sometimes they even continue until late in the evening and direct exposure to these winds may even prove to be fatal so when these winds this is very dry wind very dusty carrying a lot of dust and people go and stand they expose themselves to this wind then it is very dangerous to their health all these uh, dust everything may enter into their nose into their eyes and so and people may fall sick so whole day the wind is blowing and therefore people are unable to go out for work and so on because this wind is very dangerous and dust storms are very common during the month of may in northern india another thing that happens during this a uh, hot weather season especially in the northern india what happens is dust storms are there the storms heavy strong wind carrying lot of dust because it's a dry season all the soil may be dry and powdery and when the strong wind blows all this dust everything is carried away and so it becomes very fatal to the people of north india and these storms bring temporary relief as they lower the temperature and may bring light rain and cool breeze so though this dusty wind it is very harmful for the people at the same time they are also doing little benefit they are bringing little benefit to the people because they are bringing little rain not very strong rain but small drizzling is caused by this dusty storms and the it also brings down the temperature so we are unable to go out and stand outside because this wind will do harm but if you remain inside then we get little benefit from this wind first of all the temperature is lowered as the wind is moving the high temperature is reduced another thing is this river this is bringing little bit of rain so that way it is uh, very helpful or very you can say in bringing a lot of relief to the farmers and this is also the season for localized thunderstorms associated with violent winds torrential downpours often accompanied by hail so in india also we experience during this hot weather season what are we experiencing localized thunderstorms that means it is not spread to everywhere but in certain areas they experience thunderstorms very strong thunderstorms then they also experience violent winds very strong winds so thunderstorm and the wind violent winds then torrential downpours they also receive some rainfall then often accompanied by hail hail storm so heavy strong winds and storms are there a sudden uh, rainfall is there and it all accompanied by hail storm so that is the speciality of this hot weather season especially people in north india they experience this so when there is temperature very high it is so difficult for them but then because of the forming of the uh, low pressure there starts a movement of the air and that is uh, sometimes going on for the whole day and the wind is very strong very dusty very dry and though it is very dusty and dry and harmful to the people it is also bringing a little bit of rain but at the same time in some places there is thunderstorms are experienced not all over the north india but in certain places at the locations people experience thunderstorm and very uh, heavy rain sudden rainfall and together with the hail storm and so on so all these are not experienced every day but in certain area certain pockets of our northern india then this is also the season for localized thunderstorms 
associated with violent wind, violent wind, very strong wind, torrential downpours, often accompanied by the hail. Then the West Bengal. These storms are known as Kal Baisakhi. So these strong, dusty storms and winds. In West Bengal, people call it Kal Baisakhi. So Baisakhi is the name of a month. In Bengali, it is the name of a month. And they call it Kal Baisakhi. That means Kal is it is a calamity because a lot of damage is taking place, a lot of people fall sick, a lot of damage to their crops and so forth. So it is a, it's a calamity it's time for them. A lot of damage is taking place to them. So they like to call this wind Kal Baisaki, which means calamity for the month of Baisak. So towards the close of this summer season, Pre monsoon troubles are common, especially in Kerala and Karnataka. So, when this hot summer season is about to get over, the people in the south experience a little bit of rain. Pre monsoon troubles. We know monsoon is starting in the month of June. So, we are the hot summer season is in the month of May, it is getting over. And therefore, towards the end of this monsoon, uh, um, end of this hot weather season, we get pre-monsoon rain. Especially people of Kerala and Karnataka, they experience this rain. They experience this pre-monsoon rain. And it is very helpful for the farmers there in South India. Especially people who are cultivating mangoes. So people who are cultivating mangoes this rain is very helpful because this mango will get ripened very fast and therefore they call it mango showers so people of Karnataka and Kerala they call this pre monsoon showers as mango showers what is the reason why do they call it mango showers what is the reason it is because the farmers it is a time of mangoes flowering and uh, already mangoes are growing and because of this rain it helps the mango to get matured faster and get ripened so it is very good for farmers they will their mango will get matured very fast and they will be able to sell it and so it is very helpful for the farmers and therefore they call it mango showers so the, during the hot weather season, people in India, they experience different climates. People in North India, they experience one climate. People in the Central India experience another climate. People in the South India experience another climate and so on. And they also experience different types of the natural forces. Heavy storm, thunderstorm, uh, strong wind, uh, torrential showers, heavy rain, hailstorms, all that. So it becomes so frightening for the people, especially where it is taking place. And so the people of Bengal, West Bengal, they call it Kal Baisaki because for them it is a calamity. It is bringing down the temperature that is there. But a lot of damage is taking place. A lot, a lot of damage is happening to their crops and so on. So they call it Kal Baisaki, Calamity in the Mango Vaisak. And for the people of South India, especially people of Kerala and Karnataka, especially people who are cultivating the mangoes, mango tree, who have got this mango farm, for them this light shower, which is called pre-monsoon showers, before starting the original monsoon, they get some rain. And that rain is very helpful for the farmers because it is helping them to uh, ripen their mangoes very fast. So if they ripen their mango faster, then they can pluck it and sell it in the market and make more money. If they are selling it early, they will get more money. After some time, everybody's mango will be ready and they will be 
selling in the market and market will be having a lot of mangoes. So when there is plenty of mangoes, price will be low. So these farmers, they get it uh, ready early because of these free monsoon showers and they are able to sell it in the market and make more money. So they are very happy. And therefore they have nicknamed this free monsoon showers into mango showers because it is very helpful for the mangoes. So that is the uh, little knowledge that we can have about this hot weather season. How people in different parts of India experience this uh, during this hot weather season. So in the next class we shall study about another season that is about monsoon season. So for today we shall wind up and we will meet you again in the next class. Then bye.